You know, the fact-based analysis and market-oriented solutions offered by the Institute uh, are needed today more than ever. This is especially true as our policymakers and official Washington neglect some of the fundamental realities. You've probably heard the old quip that a gaffe in Washington is when someone accidentally tells the truth. Well, there's a pronounced shortage of truth-telling in Washington these days. Uh, it's one thing to differ over ph philosophical direction and approach. That's democracy. But uh, the routine neglect of basic facts and the fundamental realities is something we are seeing more and more at every level of government in our politics and in our governance, and it should concern all of us. That's why the Manhattan Institute and other organizations like yours are so important. You have a philosophical rudder, everybody grants you that. But your research and your conclusions are grounded in the facts. They stand up to the test of reason and sound argument. Keep doing what you're doing and do it more, please. And any rational analysis of the facts and our history will tell us that of all the things we believe make America special, the one that really stands out above all others and explains our success and our leadership is the value of economic freedom, the right to give it a go. Economic freedom, the right to take a risk and to be rewarded for one's success, the right to take a risk and to fail and then to get up off the floor and do it again. The dream of standing on your own two feet, seizing an opportunity, and building a self-sufficient uh, system through hard work and personal responsibility. It's all part of the American secret sauce and something we must preserve for future generations. So why would we ever want to move uh, by design or by accident to a system where we turn over more and more of our freedom and our responsibility to the central government. We can find a way to help the truly disadvantaged without squandering America's greatest gift and our greatest strength, our personal liberty and our self-reliance. So at the chamber, our agenda is fashioned around these realities. We call it the American Jobs and Growth Agenda. But it's more than that. It's an agenda that focuses on our national and our nation's global competitiveness and our need to be fiscally responsible. It's an agenda that understands just how vital our economic and other freedoms are to our success, to our prosperity, and to our freedom. For example, if the economy grew at 4%, that's a pretty high number, but if it did, instead of a meager 2% that we have now, hopefully in the second half, we could create 10 million additional jobs over the next, next decade. Of course, Larry Zwee would talk to me, we'd create 10 million additional jobs by fracking oil and gas. We could return the, in a decade, we could return the economy to full employment through growth alone with no rise in government spending. With a 4% growth, the government would collect more than $3 trillion in additional revenues over the coming decade, and we'd see a 30% reduction in the 10-year uh, budget deficit. That means, by the way, you want some quick arithmetic, something like $7 trillion would still be added to the deficit. Um, so here's another reality. Um, household income would increase um, significantly. Three million people would rise out of poverty and charitable giving would increase by about $200 billion. It's not complicated. Okay, so second, we've got to responsibly develop our extraordinary natural resources. We have more, this is new to us, by the way, in 10 years, we have more oil, gas, and coal, and nuclear energy than any other country, and we are now the largest single natural gas producer in the world. By swiftly 
and safely developing more American energy, we can drive stronger growth and generate government revenues that we can then use to tackle our fiscal problems. We can boost manufacturing and exports and sustain a stable supply of domestic energy that will reduce our reliance on foreign sources. And finally, let's talk about fiscal responsibility. On this topic, the realities are most obvious and the inaction is the most inexcusable. The realities are this. Government spending levels are unsustainable. You cannot keep it up the way we're doing it. This, uh, this discretionary defense and especially entitlement spending have to be bent down a little. We don't have to get rid of the Defense Department. We don't have to get rid of Medicare, but we have got to find ways on the perimeter of fixing these issues. Um, we need more revenue, but raising taxes can't come close to filling that gap. The bottom line is this. We can't solve the crisis without serious spending restraint, and that requires us to address entitlements first, second, and third. To keep those vital, and they are vital programs, solvent for future generations must be revised to meet the needs of today's population and to match the reality of our changing demographics. We're not talking about cuts in absolute terms. It's going to continue to grow. But we must slow the rate of increase by phasing in reasonable adjustments over a number of years. We must defend against an ever-growing and all-powerful federal government that promotes dependency, erodes personal responsibility, and rules the people instead of the people ruling the government. We must defend against the yoke of a government regulation system that strangles entrepreneurship, innovation, and initiative, the engines of growth and the fundamental building blocks of earned success. But more than that, we need to go on the offensive. We need to be the vocal and aggressive advocates for a free enterprise system, for global American leadership, for the timeless principles of our founding fathers and for market-based solutions rooted in the reality that it'll help reignite the economy that put us where we were and put us back on the path to prosperity. The stark reality of the leadership deficit in Washington is that one really cannot afford to ignore. In fact, this is a call to leadership, a leadership unafraid to point out the realities and offer sensible, workable solutions that make and may involve, make solutions but may involve short-term pain for long-term gain.